graduates, family, friends, faculty, staff, and honored guests, it is with great excitement that I welcome you to Salem University's 2020 and 2021 virtual commencement ceremony. The last year has taught us anything, it's that we have to be willing to try new things and have a flexible and open mindset. I'm grateful to each and every one of you for sticking with everything that was put in front of you this year. Whether you are a parent who had to send your child off to college during a global pandemic, a 2020 graduate who had to wait an entire year for this day, a student who had to learn how to learn in a completely new environment, an adult student who had to balance work, life, family, and school all within your home, or a faculty member who had to learn new technologies and new teaching methods in order to reach your students. Thank you and I congratulate you. I applaud your courage, your persistence, your flexibility, and your willingness to take risks. It may not have been a perfect year, but in Albert Einstein's words, a person who never made a mistake, never tried anything new. It's with that same spirit that we come together today for Salem's first fully virtual commencement ceremony. During today's ceremony, you will hear from our president, Mr. Feinuff, our student speakers, our alumni speaker, and our keynote speaker, Maddie Bannock. You will also hear performances from our very own Tiger Choir and hear words of congratulation and wisdom from our faculty. In just a moment, you're gonna hear from Mr. Feinuff, our president. However, before we get started, I wanna encourage you to celebrate. If there's a silver lining to this fully virtual ceremony, it's that you get to celebrate in the moment, however you want to, and however you choose. Sound your horns, clap your hands, give your hugs, stomp your feet, cry, laugh, hug, throw confetti, celebrate your way, and celebrate now. My only ask is that you share it with us. This day is important to us, too, and we miss seeing you, and our graduates miss seeing each other. So please share your pictures, your videos, and your words of congratulations through your social media. And when you do that, please tag Salem University or Salem U Tigers. Also take advantage of our social wall that we've put in place for graduation. You can post on there and then the university community, including all of our students, our graduates, our faculty, and our staff will be able to see your celebrations and share in your moment. I look forward to seeing you. And it's now time to start the ceremony. I will see each of you again at the very end. Please stay on so we can officially confer your degrees and move your tassels. On behalf of President Feinuff and the Board of Trustees, I hereby declare this graduation ceremony to be in session. Please welcome Dr. Dennis McNabo to lead us in the invocation. Congratulations to the classes of 2020 and 2021. Please join me in the invocation. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we come to you on this joyous day with our hearts lifted up to you. Each day, Lord, we see you working on our campus through our faculty, staff, and students. Because of you, Lord, we have the courage to dream and the tenacity to overcome all challenges that come our way. Lord, we know these traits are your gifts to us, and even after the ceremony ends, Lord, allow us to retain the courage and persistence we'll need to be successful throughout our lives. Lord, we stand here today filled with gratitude and joy. We are grateful for the constant support and love of the friends, faculty, staff, and families that made this day possible for these graduates. We appreciate the lifelong friendships that the students have formed. We are indebted to the families for their sacrifices that made today possible. And we are grateful for the faculty, staff, and administration who have challenged and inspired these graduates to learn, to love, and to serve. A simple thank you just doesn't adequately express our gratitude. Lord, let this day echo into the bright future of our graduates allowing them to receive and retrieve your graces. Allow the memories of their time at Salem ring on throughout their many days beyond. Lord, help these graduates to maintain the desire for your love as they continue to be faithful servants. Let them use the knowledge and skills they've gained throughout their time at Salem to serve you, Lord. 
In addition, Lord, please continue to bless Salem University as we continue to serve this local community, this state, and this nation. Allow the things we do, Lord, to be pleasing to you. Bless our faculty, staff, and administration as they lead Salem into a bright future. Bless all of those who have come before and whose shoulders we stand on as we continue to reach for the stars. We ask all of this in your precious and holy name. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Good evening. It is with great pleasure that I welcome faculty, staff, visitors, family members, distinguished guests, student and alumni speakers, honored commencement speaker Maddie Bannock, and most of all, graduates of the class 2020 and 2021. It is a pleasure to congratulate each one of you for your tremendous accomplishment of completing your education at Salem University. You are now moving from student to a Salem University alumnus and joining over 60,000 graduates worldwide. Now, this past year has been a very unusual year. The COVID-19 pandemic was certainly unexpected. It disrupted lives, it impacted families, it created doubt and fear. It still impacts us today as we hold our graduation ceremony virtually. Most of you had to adjust quickly. It wasn't easy, but you made your commitment to your education, completing your degree. Because of that commitment, we are honoring you today as a graduate of Salem University. Now life will throw us some surprises in the future as well. How you will respond will allow you to move forward many times ahead of others. Use the experience of this past year as preparation for what is yet to come. We honor our 2020 graduates this year. You had your ceremony canceled last April due to the pandemic. We are thrilled to include you in our graduation event this year. Our athletic team seasons were canceled last spring, and all of our fall games were canceled as well. I know how disappointing this was for all of our student athletes. Your professionalism and cooperation was outstanding. I'm thankful for each one of you. Our campus-based nursing students modified their learning from a clinical setting to a virtual simulation environment. I'm so proud of how each of you handled yourselves during this period of time and for your terrific accomplishment. For our online students, your lives were also disrupted. We learned of many who lost jobs or of those who had to adjust to work from home while at the same time your children were required to be home and begin remote learning. Not an easy task. It would have been easy to give up, but you 
did. You persevered and ultimately reached your goal of graduating. Some of you are just today beginning your journey. Others have previously graduated from college and you came to Salem University to earn your graduate degree. Whatever stage of life you are in, I'm confident in your ability to find success. Success is there for the taking. Understand you have tremendous value. Work hard and believe in yourself. Be passionate in everything you do. Never settle for average. Persevere through the obstacles that will come and treat others with kindness and great respect. I wish all of you great success as you move forward to the next stage of your life. You have earned it. You deserve this day. Congratulations. Good afternoon, parents, friends, teachers, administrators, mentors, and of course, the graduating class of 2021, COVID edition. Today is a day of great celebration. Today, we will become Salem graduates. We join here today to celebrate the series of events that have brought us all as individuals to small town Salem, West Virginia. During our time at Salem, we have all met so many new people, made lasting friendships, and lived lifelong memories. These formative years have brought transformations for many. Each of us have had our own unique experiences, a combination of the good, the bad, and the ugly. Times of school spirit, times of laughter and late nights, times of uncertainty to the pandemic, and a lot of last minute Sunday studying. College allows for a sense of belonging for many. The first time experiencing life away from home, adapting to new teammates, roommates, and taxing schedules. We did it. We all accomplished one of the major early milestones of our lives. These past few years have been a stepping stone in each of our journeys thus far, one that should be recognized for its immense significance. Graduation is not only an act of personal commitment, but also one of great pride. This milestone should serve as a starting point for future achievement and success. This experience has shown us how capable we all are of accomplishing our own goals by committing ourselves to them. Whatever you find your next adventure in, attempt to never stop learning, to never settle, and to tackle each obstacle in your life with great confidence. The university experience has made me appreciate the reality that you can't go through it alone. When people say it takes a village to raise a child, the same could be said about a student when obtaining a college education. It truly takes a village, a couple tears, and a whole lot of late nights. I want to thank all of the people that had a, have had a positive impact on the graduating class, for that, we are eternally grateful. In the wise words of High School Musical, this is the start of something new. So take chances, dream big, find your passion or calling, and always stay true to yourself. Once a tiger, always a tiger. I wish you all of the best as you embark on your newest adventures. Good luck and congratulations to the class of 2021. Hello, Salem University class of 2021 graduates. Allow me to be one of the first to congratulate you on tackling this challenging year and taking the next step towards your future. My name is Madeline Bannock. I'm a University of Tennessee graduate, a professional swimmer, and the current American record holder in the 50 short course meter butterfly. Now y'all have all had different journeys throughout your college careers, but I can guess most of you had a plan. You went to school every day, slaved over your GPA, and eventually figured out what career you wanted to pursue a solid four-year plan that perhaps you found comfort in. Now, the next chapter after your college years can be a bit of a question. Some of you might be going to grad school, some of you may be entering the workforce, and some of you may be chasing your athletic dreams and going pro. Whichever route you're going down, I can promise you one thing. You're going to have roadblocks. You're going to have obstacles, and I can guarantee you that you're going to fail. Wow, great commencement speech, right? But I'm serious, every single one of you is going to fail in some way, shape, or form. But how you grow from that failure is what makes you great. My first challenge I had in my life came my sophomore year of college. I was a student athlete studying kinesiology, and like the really bad student I was, my whole life revolved around my sport. Now juggling practice and classes and studying every day is hard enough, but in 2017, I was also diagnosed with depression and anxiety. I started going to see a therapist. I started rotating through different medications. I was doing everything I was told to battle this illness, but nothing was working. 
And the fact that I was putting so much effort in and not seeing results really broke me down. So I started to come up with my own coping mechanisms. I started to self-harm. I started drinking whenever I could. And I took a lot of my anger out on those closest to me. I had become someone I didn't even recognize. I went from this golden child who had great grades and was a top tier athlete to a monster no one wanted to be around. I felt like I had failed my friends, I failed my teammates, and I especially failed myself. And eventually it became all too much for me and I decided I was gonna end it all. Thankfully, my roommates got to me before I could do anything, but I truly scared myself. I had discovered that if I wanted to stay on this earth, I was gonna need some real help. Now in the moment, I was just worried about getting into a safe environment. But in hindsight, I was tired of the person I had become. I was a monster and I wanted to be that light, bubbly, life-giving girl again that everyone loves so much. So I dropped out of school, I left my teammates, left my sport, and I went to an inpatient treatment center for a month. Now, this treatment center was scary. I was definitely out of my comfort zone, but I learned more about myself in that one month there than I have in my entire 22 years of living. And when I decided that I wanted to come back for school, swimming is one passion that never ever went out. So when I returned to school, I was in a good mental spot. I had a solid plan on how I was gonna come back, get back in shape, re-enter classes, but the biggest challenge had yet to come. So my first issue I was having was I was not enrolled in school. So therefore I was not a student athlete and I could not train with the team. My second issue was that I had burned a lot of bridges when I left. And most of my friends and teammates didn't believe that I could become a completely new person in only a month. And I don't blame them. My third issue was going to be tackling these other two obstacles without going back into a dark hole again. So I started thinking about it and it would have been easier to just quit swimming than try and tackle training on my own and getting back into shape when everything was against me. It would have been easier to have lost those friendships forever than it would have been to swallow my pride and own up to the mistakes I had. But then I started thinking it would have been a lot easier to just swallow that bottle of pills than it would have been to leave everything I knew, everyone I loved and go to an inpatient treatment center. But I did it and I was a better person for it. So I got creative. I started cycling, running stadiums, lifting, swimming whenever I could away from the team. I sat down with people and, you know, made amends, started rebuilding friendships, and I gave them time to heal as I did. Um, none of this was easy. All of this was very, very difficult and a lot harder than I imagined it would be when I came back, but it all paid off in the end. That same year that I went to treatment, I became an SEC conference champion and I qualified for an NCAA championship with only three months of training under my belt. The next year, my senior year, my teammates voted me as team captain, an honor I still hold dear to this day. And that same year, I was part of a relay that won an NCAA title, a goal I had had since I had committed to swim for UT. Now, I never foresaw any of these obstacles, and I definitely didn't think it would be as hard, my first two years of college would be as hard as they were. But these, girl, these obstacles made me into the woman I am today, and I wouldn't trade them for the world. Here's the thing, you guys are gonna come up on things that come out of the blue. Whether it's professional or in your personal life, you're going to come across a roadblock and you have to decide if you're gonna give into it or if you're gonna sacrifice anything you can to succeed. Now, after my college career, my swimming career actually did not end. Um, I did take a three month period off to be a normal college kid for a little bit, which was really fun. But I started thinking uh, that I wasn't done yet. I felt called back to the water. Um, the last time I went at best time in any of my events was my freshman and sophomore year, so three years ago. And those were the lowest points in my life. So I got curious and almost fueled by the idea that if I had been so good when I was at mentally my lowest, how good could I be now when I was in a correct mindset? So I decided that I was gonna try out for the professional swimming world. So I ended up staying at the University of Tennessee because I loved the coaches there. But my main focus was to get back in shape because I had three months off, which is a long time in the water, and I needed to get back in shape so I could make it to the Olympic trials and then eventually make the team. Now, my first year as a professional swimmer was pretty tame. 
Um, I kind of loved it because I had no school to worry about, no extracurricular activities. I just got to chase the dream that I had been dreaming about since I was a little girl. So most of my days were purely based on training and recovery. The weekends, I would work swim clinics. And then once or twice a month, we would get to go to swim meets, which was really fun. Um, I didn't swim bad that year, but I wasn't hitting the times I needed to to make an Olympic team. So we started working even harder. And that's when in March, COVID hit. Now, as an Olympic hopeful, that first period when COVID hit in March was full-blown panic. Um, They were closing the pools along with everything else. People were starting to get sick, and no one knew if the Olympics were going to be canceled or postponed. Um, So there was a lot of head scratching and fear that if we couldn't even get in the water to train, how were we supposed to be our best for the biggest sports stage ever? Um, So, you know, we eventually the Olympics were postponed and everyone went into lockdown. Now, I'm not going to lie to you guys. My first few weeks of lockdown were a bit of a mess. I was a mess. Um, My mental health was not great. Uh, I was sleeping a lot. I wasn't working out at all. And I was eating and drinking whatever I wanted to. But I started thinking about it. And I knew that the best swimmers in the world weren't just sitting back and getting lazy and waiting for someone to tell them what to do. They were still working on their craft. They were still wanting to be the best. And that motivated me a lot. I wanted to play with the big dogs, even though there was no Olympic Games guaranteed. So I started to cycle, box, lift. Unfortunately, I ran. Um, Kayaked, yoga. That all became a part of my daily routine. I just wanted to stay as active as possible. I also started to become more focused on my nutrition and how I could fuel my body to, you know, race. Um, And... You know, eventually I started to feel my body get stronger in ways that were very new to me as a swimmer because we're very like water focused and getting strong on land is not something we necessarily focus on. Um, So I was really excited about that. And when we did eventually get back in the water at the end of summer, I was going super fast and I was really excited to show what I could do. And one of my best swimming opportunities so far had just arrived at my door. So there is a swimming league, international swimming league called the ISL. So for those of you who aren't swimmers, think about it as kind of an NFL sort of setup. Um, There are 10 teams all over the world that are filled with Olympians and world champions. Basically what happens is we all compete against each other for money, which is huge in the professional swimming world because there's not a lot of revenue in it. And eventually we compete for the title at the end of the year. Um, so I had the honor of joining the team Energy Standard, which were the defending champions. And this was a big deal for me because I had swam pretty poorly last year. And so for the defending champs to give me a shot to join their team and, you know, show the world what I could do was a huge honor in my eyes. I was very, very excited. And so we went to Budapest for six weeks this past, past October. Um, while we were there, we, we were in an NBA style of bubble. And basically what we did is we trained, we raced, and, you know, we got to meet other swimmers from around the world. Um, this was a very new arena for me. I was kind of a nobody. I have never been fast enough to be on a national team or, you know, internationally travel for swimming. So I was definitely out of my element. But I also like look back on how well I had been swimming since quarantine. And I knew that I belonged with these guys. I've been training for four years in high school, four years in college, two years as a professional swimmer, and I was ready to show everyone what I could do. And so while we were there, um, I actually swam pretty well. I um, was named one of the breakout swimmers of the year. Um, I made a name for myself. But the key moment in the whole trip was my 50 meter butterfly during the finale. Um I was racing the world record holder, the current American record holder, and a whole slew of other top tier butterflyers in the world right now. Um, So needless to say, I was nervous, but I knew deep down that I had been working my butt off for this. And, you know, I kind of went out there with the the dog mentality of taking what I want and I was going to do whatever I could to get it. So I ended up getting second in that race. Um, behind my Swedish teammate. But when I turned and looked at the scoreboard and saw my time, it was a new American record. Um, To describe to you guys the emotions I felt in that moment would take way longer than 10 minutes that I can give you. But basically, 
if you've ever or will ever reach a goal or a dream that you have worked so hard for, put so much effort into, have put so many resources into and you achieve it, the feeling is unbelievable. One of my favorite quotes is the higher the mountain, the better the view. And this was the perfect example of that. So, you know, every time that I reach one of my goals, whether it's becoming an NCAA champion, um, getting the American record or having the opportunity to share my story to people like y'all, I always find myself looking back on that deflated young woman who sat alone in her room and was ready to end her life. You know, she had no idea. She could not even fathom what she could achieve. She had no idea that the story and the hurt she was going through in that moment would eventually help people. And she could, she had no idea that all of her dreams would eventually become a reality. So here's my challenge for you guys as you start your next chapter. Run into it head on, okay? Take risks. Yes, you're going to fail, but is the reward even worth it without the struggles? I would be proud of my achievements for the rest of my life. But if someone had approached me and handed them to me, them to me on a silver platter, would I have felt the same way? Would I have felt that I truly earned it? Would I have grown into the woman I am today? I can honestly say there's not a single thing about my journey that I would have changed. It was a lot harder than I had planned for or expected it to be, but it's giving me amazing, amazing lifetime opportunities. So my challenge for you guys is to go at your dreams head on, fail, make mistakes, conquer your obstacles, give your 110% every day and go take what is yours. I'll be cheering for you all. Good luck and go Tigers. Hello, all students, congratulations for your uh, graduation from this historical 133 years old Salem University. And now it is your responsibility to disseminate of your learned skills to lead the local, state, and global level. Yes, dear students, you are your life to your family, your community, and through your uh, upcoming exciting career to the community as well. Again, congratulations and all the best. Mariana Antonio. Christine Bombardier. Cerise Dingiswayo. Xavier Ingleton. Isaiah Harris. Cheyenne Hooker. Nina Isaac. Ethan Jarvis. Jalavia Johnson. Christian Motes. Leanne Moser. Daniela Quesada. Dalton Robeson. Jasmine Tulaney. Chloe Woodbine. Congratulations, business majors. All the very best moving forward. If I can do anything for you, please let me know. Take care. Desiree Adams. Motunrayo Rachel Adedipe. Lachelle Allison. Innocent Anav Berokai. Patricia Anderson. Sherry Anthony. April Archer. Christopher Arnold. Tavine Askew. Morgan Atkinson. Tyler Alt. Bradley Baldwin. Eileen Crump Ball. Edwin Baquero. Tabitha Barker. Jason Barnes. Ramiz Bamji. 
Anthony Biller Keisha Blackmore Kirby Blake Martha Bland Shelby Bloom Ya Boeti Timothy Boring Imari Bowers Brendan Bridenthal Kyle Briggs Darian Brown David Brown Chrislyn Brown Stefan Boltez Jonathan Burton Charlene Calhoun Amy Callahan Leanne Campbell Matthew Canzonieri Kirsten Kerrigan April Carson Albert Cartanudo Violet Cartha Samuel Chapman Patricia Clark Sean Clark Nicole Cleveland Michael Collins Nicholas Collins Richard Collins Alvin Constantine Michael Cork Sherry Crane Hannah Crew Nashley Cruz Vega Mandy Cubbage Dominic Carroll Kathy Curry Autumn Custer James Davidson Sabrina Davis Nicole Davis Schutzner Victor de Souza Ba de Wall Kaylee Decker Pavel Del Valle Ulysses Diaz Alexa Dobrijevich Walker Dodero Mehmet Dogan Jonathan Dolan Ningxin Du Latrice Duncan Austin Earl Amy Eastman Catherine Elgin Ennis Elias Shawan Faltz Dustin Farmer Antonio Fedoru Mark Ferenczi Baco William Fields Edwina Folly Jordan Forbes David Frank Ashley Freed Andrew Friend Meng Fu Debbie Gallagher Marco Gamarota Jessica Garcia Jessica Garza Xu Wen Ge Adam Gonzalez Emily Gonzalez Maria Gonzalez Kendall Anthony Grandstaff Kayla Grant Marquis Grant Damon Gray Danielle Gray Ryan Gray Marta Grzynska Chen Ying Guo Naomi Hagerman Christopher Hyde 
Nekebra Hampton Alfred Hansen Jeffrey Harrison Braden Hayes Xiao Chi He Isaiah Hay Tanner Helms Lisa Hernandez Latanya Hidley Marcy Hill Tyler Hill Sarah Inojosa Gregory Hollis Brittany Holloway Aaliyah Holmes Liam Hopkins Blake Horn Stacy Howell Xin Yang Huang Christy Hutchings Brandy Hutton Amanda Jackson Latoya Jackson Martha Jackson Dariana James Jesse James Dakota Jarrett Uros Yevtich Joshua Jilson Brianna Jimenez Gabrielle Jabati Jacob Johnson Stephen Johnson Janine Jones Terrace Jones Joseph Juana Nichelle Kaiser Dung Kai Wen Eric Candle Donna Kendrick Curtis Ketchup Kenneth Knox Keith Krimmel Eve Lamoth Alexander Langley Amy Lawrence Andrew Lett Chen Wei Li Mei Xin Li Jiang Ping Liu Zi Yang Liu Wan Ying Long Astrid Lopez Stephanie Love Fan Lu Yi Lu Benjamin Mack Danielle Malenconico Caitlin Markstein Amy Martin Jonathan Mata Harland Maynard Angelina McDonald Robin McGill Venice Mendez Courtney Metzger Ganyat Mixon Silvio Montenegro Amanda Moore Alec Moran Andrea Morelli Alan Morris Nicholas Murtaugh Jennifer Myers Calvin Negus Nikel Nsham Stephen O'Connell Salvador Orozco Sean Palmer Joe Parker Taylor Parker Tony Ann Penny Brenton Purcell Kitshawa Person Chloe Peters Quentin Ferris Samuel Pieta 
Lauren Pinska Milos Popovic Michael Posey Brittany Poth Gerald Powell Joseph Powell Precious Price Daphne Queen Tamara Queiros Justine Ramirez Timothy Rausch Della Reese Williams Megan Richards Diego Rius Felicia Roberts Chase Roby Michael Rojas Dreshene Roll Yosmel Romero Aurora Romick Peter Romsek Valerie Rush Irina Russen Danya Salman Rhonda Scalise Kara Scholl James Schaefer Kelsey Shaver Antonio Shah Stacia Shelley Carolyn Sherwood Jacqueline Shires Chantel Sluss Leonardo Tara Smar Alicia Smith Brandy Smith Zugeli Spearman Chris Spies Christian Stampler Victor Stosky Charles Story John Sturgeon Christine Sturdevant Noah Suarez Taylor Talbot Ray Tan Eamon Torres Johnny Taylor Mark Taylor Zachary Team Holly Thomas Jeffrey Thomas Molly Thomas Sheila Thompson Leonardo Tillamont Stuart Tingler Chad Toledo Diana Trevick Kate Turluck Catherine Turner Lering Tuzing Marco Tutunovic Federico Urcioli J.C. Van Arkel Jerome Van Wert Maria Vasilakis Rebecca Vaughn Francis Walker An Chi Wang Hao Wei Wang Sheng Xiao Wang Yan Fei Wang Yang Wang Ying Wang Yi Wen Wang Dajasnai Warner Christopher Watson Shelley Welch Austin Wetzel Giandria White Jody Wildman Ashley Williams Geneva Willis Marcarlis Wright Wen Yu Xie Xiao Yue Xu Jinghao Yan 
Dong Yu. Ding Tong Zeng. Ding Xing Jiang. Jia Chen Jiang. Yue Han Zhou. It gives me great pleasure to be recording this video message for the graduates of Computer Science and Information Technology Department for year 2021. This is your day. We applaud you, we honor you, and we stand with you during this momentous juncture in your life. Looking back, I know we faced many challenges but you preserved despite the obstacle and challenges. You kept your focus, studied dutifully, and never doubted your commitment to better yourself, your family, and your community. You have made choices that will make a huge impact on your future. You have learned to understand change. You have being a part of the change and you lived through a change. You are the digital generation and being computer science and information technology graduates, you will harness this unique quality in leading a change in digital generation. Learning must not stop at this milestone. It is my hope that you will continue to expand your knowledge and make a bold difference in your profession and lives of those you have chosen to serve, upholding inclusion, diversity, justice, and humbleness in all your endeavors. Be proud of your individual and collective accomplishments, and do not forget those who have helped you in reaching this milestone. Best wishes to all graduates, and remember that we at Salem are still here to serve you. Have a nice day. Thank you. Casey Buchanan. Lynn Clement. Dondre Davis. Jason Gomez. Isaiah Green. David Harris. Joshua Hawley. Meseret Kinf. Jeffrey Langdon, Christy Nicholson, Daniel Pope, Mary Shaw, Matthew Vasil, Keaton Wilson Delaney, Heather Woods, Joshua Addy, Robert Brown. Gabriel Craig, Miles Dobson, Janelle Elias, Christopher Fasinu, Jia Yi Huang, Curtis Johnson, Terry Jones, Robert Huhaj, Yared Kinf. Peter Leontievich, Andrew Phelps, Tyler Rankins, Chad Russell, Nicholas Saar, Beverly Wright, I'm Cam Lounsbury, Associate Provost and Director of Criminal Justice Programs at Salem University. I want to congratulate all of the graduates from 2020 and 2021, especially those from, of course, the Criminal Justice Program, and particularly those who are the inaugural graduates of the Master of Criminal Justice Program. Congratulations to everyone. Matthew Abreu. Brandon Bailey. Destiny Baldwin. Inda Barber Dewberry, Ariel Bartram, Michael Belka, 
Bailey Bethke. Ashley Blankenship. Amber Bolin. Monica Brown. Brendan Case. Kaylee Caswell. Jennifer Chester. Tammy Cornelius. Olivia Davoli. Tammy DeMello. Leah Dermody. Michael Diaz. Tristan Fulton. Jamie Gallagher. Angelica Jenny. Crystal Gray. Emily Groff. Arkia Hall. Heather Hamrick. Megan Heil. Breezy Hensel. Samantha Howell. Matthew Humbert. Chantel Hunter. Nicole Hurley. Reva Jackson. Jared Johnmeyer. Devin Johnson. Jessica Johnson. Melinda Jordan. Angelina Landolf. Joshua Lanier. Parker Lenevy. Danielle Lewis. William Lintner. Melissa Malay. Arrow Maniraj. Alicia Marquez. Vanessa Marquez. Sydney McPherson. Alberto Mendoza. Casey Moritz. Tequila Muse. Alicia Newland. Sandra Olaya. Marissa Paserba. Emily Pontiacos. Charles Powell. Luis Raimundi. Marisol Rodriguez. Robert Rodi. Malik Ross. Theron Rouse. Brianna Sackheim Bennett. Adriana Sanchez. Sadie Shirley. Shonda Stone. Tiffany Virola. Willie Walton. Elena Welts. Ariana West. Lakendrick Williams. Danica Zins. Congratulations. Congratulations from the School of Education to our educational leadership students, as well as to our teacher education students. The School of Education and the faculty would like to congratulate you and your accomplishments and your perseverance for your successes. We certainly hope that you continue to run after your new goals and accomplish many, many, many new achievements. Again, congratulations. Nicole Agee. John Arlesic. Michelle Ash. Donald Bailey. Todd Barkas. Whitney Berry. Beth Bishop. Jennifer Bowner. Joseph Bowen. Christopher Brown. Sydney Burt. Jessica Caldwell. Elizabeth Calvert. 
Amanda Campbell, Kathy Chikinovich, Anne Clark, Jill Clay, Matthew Conrad, Paige Cook, Alexandra Corbett, Drew Crawford, Kristen Q. Tyler D'Alessandro, Jamie Dalton, Ashley Darty, Thomas Davis, Rachel Dean, Amber Dees, Natalie Dennis, Sarah Diaz, Melissa DiMarsico. Amanda DiMarzio Daniel Doyle Christine Droppelman Jennifer Dabraski Shonda Easter Heather Eckerd Carson Ellis Brian England Brian Faber Waverly Federico Tracy Fluharty Godfrey Ali Freem Tammy Furness Summer Garlic Ashley Gert Joshua Gorell Wanda Govan Jill Griba Catherine Hamilton, Susan Hamilton, Nicole Hayes, Stephanie Hayes, Paul Henderson, Catherine Hendrick, Gail Hickman, Jonathan Hicks, Lisa Hindman. David Hodges, Audra Holland, Christina Holston, Owen Howes, Cody Jeffries, Charles Jordan, Jared Keller, Josh Kinyard, Megan Kitzmiller, Jessica Knox, Brian Kosikowski, Jason Lamka, Brian Lash, Elizabeth Lee, Otessa Leap, Peyton Lewis, Morgan Lloyd, Andrew Long. Brian Marshall, Danielle Martin, Seth Martin, Michaela Masters, Javier McCoy, Emily McDonald, Ruth McLean, Allison McNabo, Jason Merriman. Charles Miller, Susan Miller, Sarah Moody, Caitlin Moore, Jason Morris, Payden Morris, Roberta Morrow, McLean Murad, Heather Noble. Sammy Nutter, Nicholas Noirache, Alexander O'Donnell, Cynthia Oxender, Melissa Oyer, Timothy Patrick, 
Dylan Persinger Michelle Peters Chris Ferris Kevin Pitsnoggle Bethany Pleo Janie Poole Alexi Prankus Sarah Price Victoria Ray Haley Fred Ray John Raymond Brandy Richards Jamie Ritzenthaler Matthew Robeson Daniel Rohan James Rubal Megan Rupert Lynette Ryan Trisha Sakocha Tyler Scott Andrew Seals Natalie Seiler Cynthia Schaefer Dominic Shannon Dodie Slaughter Brandon Slua Barbara Smith Kristen Smith Melissa Smaus Maxwell Snyderman Bria Spaulding Chad Spencer Kayla Spitzer Angie Summers Cody Sutton Daniel Tennant Austin Thomas Benjamin Thomas Taylor Thomas Angela Trader Carissa Tress Jennifer Trump Stephanie Van Dyke Amy Vandergrift Pham Vien Samuel Vincent Allison Warner William Watkins Brooke Wagaman Adam White Kayla White Thomas Wibbler Jordan Witter Patrick Williams Cheryl Wine Michelle Weinmiller James Wiseman Julie Weisenbarger Jennifer Wolf Haley Wolf Catherine Woofter Shelley Wooldridge Amy Yost Joseph Urish I would like to say thank you to our nursing graduates of 2020 and 2021 for taking that noble call of nursing. This is truly a milestone achievement. Commencement marks one of the greatest achievements in a person's life. It symbolizes a lot of hard work and dedication. I know how meaningful this day is for you and for your friends and families and loved ones to share in that tremendous achievement. While well, you may be thinking of this day as the end of your nursing school journey, I want to encourage you to see it as a beginning. This is the beginning of an opportunity for you to be a change agent and make the difference that's so desperately needed in healthcare today. I also encourage you to make education and lifelong learning a part of your life. There couldn't be a better time to enter the profession of nursing. Our current challenges have really shown us the impact that nurses have had on their patients and families every day. 
your nursing pin signifies your right and your privilege to practice as a professional nurse. You earned it, and I hope you wear it with pride. I'd like to leave you with a final thought. So if you would, close your eyes and take a deep breath. Feel the calmness of your breath. Approach your nursing career with that same calmness of the breath that you just took. Remember to treat your patients with the care that you would give to yourself. And remember those five C's of nursing, which are be calm, be compassionate, be confident, be consistent, and be courageous. Finally, I encourage you to to create a placeholder in your minds and in your hearts of humility and gratitude. That humility and gratitude that your mentors have communicated to you over and over. You've been prepared with that real world skills that are required to meet the challenges head on. You can do this. You've got this. And I believe in you. So it is with great, great honor and respect that I sincerely congratulate you, the nursing graduates of the class of 2020 and 2021. I welcome you to the profession of nursing. So go full of hope to your new beginning and make it count. And remember, You always have a home here at Salem University School of Nursing. My sincere blessings to each and every one of you today and always. Thank you. Carrie Atchison. Alyssa Baker. Elizabeth Bowen. Leslie Bowman. Brooke Britton. Julie Carroll, Serena Claypool, Deban Clevenger, Alicia Curtis, Jessica Farako, Lisa Galford, Jamie Garrett, Aaron Garrison, Courtney Hallpenny, Brittany Hardy, Hillary Heaster, Amber Hoover, Christy Jackson, Brandy Lane, Samantha Martin, Jamie Paletta, Robert Perry, Brittany Phillips, Brooke Policano, Carol Porter, Tammy Porter, Brianna Poston, Crystal Ramsberg, Jessica Riffle, Savannah Ross, Janine Sandora, Miranda Singleton, Eli Southern, Brandy Tomey, Sherry Webb, Good afternoon, distinguished guests, members of the faculty, professors, my fellow graduates, ladies and gentlemen. It is an honor and my pleasure to address you all today. Although we are meeting under unfortunate circumstances behind a screen, I would like to highlight the fact that we are even meeting at all. As we all know, this past year brought many uncertainties, along with graduation ceremonies ranking ranking among everyone's radar. I feel truly blessed to be here speaking to you today, not only as a guest speaker, but as a human being surviving and living through a pandemic. At this time, I would like to thank the university for organizing this virtual commencement.
More notably, I would like to personally thank our Dean of Student, Student Affairs, Dr. Dennis McNabe, for not only taking a huge part in this event, but for his perseverance and always taking a personal interest in the academic and social development of every student he encounters. As I sit back and contemplate what I'd like to say, I keep drifting toward the word community, tight-knit community that is. Three years ago, I decided to leave home and travel to the East Coast to pursue my goal in continuing my studies while wrapping up my collegiate water polo career. While it wasn't easy leaving home, I quickly found another home away from home. What I found was a community of like-minded student athletes going through similar achievements and struggles as I myself was going through. I quickly fell in love with the familiarity we all had in common. I realized people don't come to Salem for the big college experience. That's what WVU is for. Students choose to come back to Salem for its intimate nature and tight-knit community. And of course, the one class a month. <laughs> At this moment, I'd like to thank several important people in my life that either encouraged or supported me through this incredible journey. These people taught me the value of hard work and gave me the building blocks needed to become a successful young man. They encouraged me in all my endeavors, provided me with everything I needed, and spoke highly of me to anyone who would listen. Mom, Dad, thank you for the support, your relentless love, and for driving me to all my 6 a.m. morning practices. I love you both very much. To my friends, who I spent countless hours with studying together, keeping each other accountable, and making memories that'll last a lifetime. Those few individuals, you know who you are. Thank you, and I could have done it without you. Class of 2020 and Class of 2021, may we shape ourselves to be the best we can possibly be and become proud role models for all future generations. Thank you. Go Tigers. Graduates, it's almost official. Grab your caps and join me and a group of your Salem University peers for the next steps. I'm joined today with a few of our Salem University employees who are also graduates. Before your degree is conferred, and yes, the tassel is worth the hassle, please take a moment of gratitude. None of us are successful alone. Take a minute to thank your family, your friends, your coworkers, and that one person who knew you could get through it even when you weren't sure. Let them know how much it meant to you that they were there for you. Thanks, thank Eric. you. This moment, the conferral of your degree is the first step. The most important thing you learned while in college was learning how to learn. The point of college isn't necessarily that you learned when the US fought in the War of 1812, is that you learned how to think, how to problem solve, how to work independently and as part of a team. And that you leave here not with a memory of dates and events, but with the skills to research when we fought in the War of 1812, if you ever need to know that date. It's that you learned how to be successful and have the ability to continue learning, growing, and succeeding. So now, by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees and with the support of the faculty, it gives me great pleasure to confer upon you the degree you have earned, including all the rights and privileges associated with that honor. You may now move your tassel from right to left. Ladies and gentlemen, faculty, family, and guests, join me in congratulating the Salem University classes of 2020 and 2021. Hello, Salem University graduates. I'm Carolyn Bacon, Director of Alumni Relations. It's my honor today to congratulate you on your major milestone. You worked very, very hard. You did it, you accomplished your tasks, and I'm very, very proud of each and every one of you. I remember 51 years ago, I was sitting on the stage at the Salem Armory, waiting and waiting and wondering what my future will be. I remember thinking, what's next? What's next? I don't have my mentors anymore. I won't have my professors. And will I ever, ever see my friends here again? And I was very nervous about that. And will I find a job? But I'm here to tell you that what's next for you is, as of this moment, you are all members of the Salem University Alumni Association. What does that mean for you? 
that means you are eligible for a number of opportunities. We have mentoring programs. We have networking programs. We have webinars. We have major activities, career advice, Salem trips, uh, newsletters that are sent out twice a year, and alumni updates that tell you what's going on. We visit athletic events together. We have many reunions all over the country. We have Zoom calls all over the country. So you will see your friends again, and you will have a number of activities. How do you get involved in the Alumni Association? As I said, you are already a member as we speak. There's no cost for this program whatsoever. The only thing I need all of you to do is keep us updated on your email addresses and on your addresses. So when your emails run out in six months, we need to know where to find you so that we can get you involved. We would love to have you involved with us. We want you, we need you. Please, please keep us updated on all of your personal information. Welcome all of you to the Salem University Alumni Association.